Hey folks, if you're like me, you're craving that good old cast iron that was made so many years ago, but they're out of business. But hang on, I might have something that takes its place. We're doing an unboxing video for YouTube. Stick around, find out what's in the box. Hey folks, we are awful excited today. We're gonna do something a little different and I am ready to see it. We Shane. haven't done an unboxing video before. What? YouTube has um, started a new channel. It's called YouTube Unboxed. And we're actually gonna put the link below this video so you can check out that channel. And what they're doing is they're just getting content creators to unbox exciting new holiday products that might give you guys some ideas. And so we're gonna do one. And so this video is sponsored by YouTube. And uh, what are we what are we unboxing today? I'm always looking for some cast iron that is really, really good, like the old stuff they used to make, like that old Wagner back there and that Griswold. Come on, let's open it. So today we are going to unbox a field company cast iron skillet. And why don't you tell us how we kind of stumbled upon them? Well, you know, we were looking for American made cast iron. You were on the old Google. Yeah. And you do, typed do, in. I, I smoking it too. Well, it was probably a two finger deal. Cast iron has to be made in America because it's ensuring that it's pure cast iron. Yeah, right? and it's quality. Right. It is quality. And when I ventured up on these little picture popped up and it's two brothers and I thought, you know, I, I like them folks. They launched this September. So this really is a new yeah. product. And so we have never seen a skillet. I haven't. Can we open it? Let's do Christmas early. Field company, here we come. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh my gosh, okay. Hey, I like that packaging. Yes, look, isn't that nice? It's this. You ready? <gasps> oh, check this out. So it comes in a pouch. I like that. All right. Thank you. We got a card here. I really like how it look is at secure in yes. here. Yes. You ready? Yeah, I'm excited. Okay, <gasps> the number one thing, folks, that I can already tell you when you first pull the sack out of this, that this is like the old iron was made. You can see it is a polished, smooth finish. Yeah. This is mine. Get away from it. Okay, whoa. Wait, really? Are you surprised at that? Look how smooth. If you guys have bought any new cast iron, you know it's pre-seasoned. Yeah. This is also a pre-seasoned skillet. What do you call that pre-seasoning? It's like... It's like a sprayed-on truck bed liner. Yeah. I mean, it feels about like running your hand over the beagle's feet. I mean, it is rough. Yeah. This doesn't I, look like it's seasoned it's, all. The only reason I know it's seasoned is because when you run your fingers through it, you're actually picking up some of the oil that's still in it. So it's like somebody just personally oiled this, packaged it, and sent it yeah. to us. That's and, and what I like about it more too is it's it's up the side smooth finish it all is. the way to the top. Yeah. And hey, what do Look we at like there. here? Made in the USA. Oh, Field right. company. And this is it's a this is an eight inch. It's got one. good weight, but it's made like the old style handles from years ago. It it pulls in here, it's what thin. Just pull down that old on, Griswold. This is this is a six inch Griswold. Fill that. Weight wise. It's kind of, it's pretty close. Pretty close. This it's, six is weighing about as much as this eight. The thin wall of this, just like this, and the polished surface that's put in this, this is how iron was made so many years ago. And that's why people love this stuff. That's why people hunt this old stuff down, because it's so easy to deal with. Whoa. I am really... Smoother than a baby's butt, Shan. I mean, I know they spent a lot of time it's with friendly. the handle. Yeah. And it... Feels good. Yeah, it does feel good. The little tip here, yes. I like because um, even though it is a lighter skillet, if I need some extra balance, I have something to grab onto. One thing I noticed that is missing, do you know? Pour spout. A pour spout. Give me that other one back. I want to see the bevel in here and see if how much different it is. This one has a slight bevel, but more straight on. And this, you're getting a real little lip there. And I think that's kind of what they're using as their all around yeah, pouring. I, th I think that thing will pour just fine. I hope you guys can see this. It's picking up our fingerprints, which is, yeah. that is so unique. Somebody was in there with a rag, like, here you go, Kent. I can, hope you enjoy. I can honestly say the Wagner and the Griswold people would be proud because wow. this, is, this is how old iron was made. Griswold and the field, but look, 
at the walls. Similar. Um, it's nearly identical yeah. in the, the thickness. And that is the biggest issue, I think, with newer yeah. cast iron is it's, it's thicker, it's heavier. Uh, I feel like there's a lot more detail and refinement. Maybe? Yes. Let me just go over this card that they have. Let me see if I agree. That go will ahead. come in with your skillet. Um, the field skillet comes pre-seasoned with two coats of grapeseed oil. Hey. That you gets you off to a good start, but building an even durable, dark, non-stick seasoning is only achieved through time and use. Completely agree with that. Normally, what would you do if you got a new cast iron skillet? If it's brand new, I'd probably have to sand it. Yeah. You know, I'd we sand it down there to where we got all the pre-season off, and then we would start back, rinse it with hot water and soap, and that's the only time you'll ever hear them words come out of my mouth. But it's a baking process. We yeah. do that three or four times. So this skillet literally is... Two steps ahead or three already. Before you use the pan, gently scrub with water and a small amount of dish soap. Whoa! Hey! You were right. This is the only time we recommend using hey, soap. Hey, my kind did of people. You cheat off these no, people? I did not. Wipe dry, heat on a stove to evaporate any moisture, and coat the pan inside with a thin coat of cooking oil of your choice. I mean, we generally reseason with olive oil. Would yeah. you stick with that? Uh, I would probably start with that and just see what happens. We have found with skillets, particularly, the seasoning isn't as crucial let's say as a dutch oven because people are using their skillets more and they don't have a <clears throat> they don't have a lid sitting on top of yeah, them better you know. air vent yeah. okay so preheat your pan five minutes before cooking for even heat distribution good tip yes avoid acidic foods which strip off the seasoning tomatoes wine citrus vinegar yes I, that is true but i we we, we don't cook that way. we don't avoid them but when yeah. I, if I was starting out in this skillet, that would not be the first thing I no. cooked in the first four weeks, I'll promise Good you. Good point, yes. There are certain things that are hard on your seasoning, but that's why it's important to clean them well yeah. and reseason them every time after use. Long simmers with salty liquids strip your seasoning. They will that, especially if it's uh, got a water base to it that you're really boiling hard. Uh, yeah. We never make any soups or like boiling pasta or anything like that. And or beans boiling beans. It'll just boil out your seasoning. Build up your seasoning by sauteing onions, baked cornbread, roasting vegetables, or just about any kind of frying. Yes, bacon and potatoes, you know, is what I like to start in a skillet if you'll fry potatoes in it. But baked cornbread and something like that too is really good because it's it's got a little oil in the cornbread mix itself, yeah. but also, and it's, it's going to help that seasoning. Oh, uh oh. speaking of. Contrary to popular belief, most proteins, including bacon, may stick a bit in the early stages before seasoning builds up. Before you get some good seasoning, yeah, yeah. some things may stick. And that's why it's important, as they say, Pre make sure it's heat. hot. Yes. Yeah, because if you have a hot skillet and you put food on it, it's tend to... Cold piece of meat's going <laughs> to suck down there to it. Yep. I like this little card because it's like just real basic yes. and easy. So if you're beginning in, in cast iron, it's not going to scare you. Um, okay, and so then they just have a few points about cleaning and maintenance. Gently scrape and smooth the surface with a spatula or flat edge scraper. And that would need to be wood or plastic. Yep. If possible, avoid using water. Oh, that's interesting. I wouldn't. Hmm. Do you know why they're saying that? I do not. I would use hot water, but, and that's all, not, yeah. not soap or anything. Okay. Uh -uh. Wipe out excess oil and food residue with a paper towel or cloth. We go on the cloth side. We go cloth because we don't want to transfer any lint. Sometimes a paper towel is just full of lint, and when you season or you try to clean out, it just sticks. However, this guy... Such a smooth finish, you might get It doesn't have any humps, bumps. Please leave your pan with a coat of cooking oil or fat on the inside and outside. A bone-dried pan is an unhappy pan. That is right. When, you know, do, you see, when do you re-season, Kent? I reseason every time, every trip. If I cooked in this three times today, I reseasoned it three times today. I think we should take it to some fire. Let's uh, cook something in it and uh, see what happens. Now, folks, I just brought this in from the barn. Run me some good hot water and a little soap. Give it just a gentle scrub there. See how that just beads water up? If you folks ever put water in a Teflon skillet and seen what it does, it just beads up and rolls off like that. I'm telling you, this may be my most favorite thing in the world if things work out just right. Put it over here on a low heat, wiped all the water out of it good, low heat. We're gonna let it get warm, then we're gonna turn it up. Then I'm gonna see what this thing can do. It's like driving a brand new truck for the first time. I'm gonna try it out. We don't want it in the house. 
built us a fire right on top of that stove and got after it. They don't necessarily recommend bacon. What us can't do, he puts bacon in I it. I put bacon in it right off the bat because if this is a piece of pre-seasoned iron or iron that is not seasoned well, you can't fry a piece of bacon in there. It'll stick to it and it won't turn loose. You'll tear up your bacon trying to get it off. But what did this do? Flipped right over. Yep. No stick. None whatsoever. Then I fried me some taters in there, I did. So now why do you like to do bacon and potatoes initially? I, I like to fry something in a piece of cast iron, something that's going to give good taste and good seasoning, that is bacon. Sure. Bacon grease is good, but cast iron, especially new, loves starch. Yeah. It loves some fried potato in there. So if a man just wanted to just fill this thing up with a little grease, you know, about mm -hmm. that deep, and just fry taters in it three or four days, that would work hey. It is made the old way. Smooth finish when you get it. Thin sidewall, feels really good in your hand, and it already comes with a seasoning sort of built up on there that is right. I'd recommend this, especially for people who are looking for a new piece of cast iron. Yeah. Maybe that have never had none in their life, but they're saying, hey, I want to join the cast iron army here. I think this is like, as a special point, I would suggest this piece for anybody that's just starting out in cast iron is really not familiar with cast iron. Because with this skillet, you don't have to do the normal process right. of taking off all the seasoning and then baking it back on. In kind of the theme of this YouTube Unbox channel and holiday gift giving ideas, this I would say is a pretty good oh, one. Oh, it is First, a great gift. You build a relationship with your yep. cast iron. It creates good food. It creates good memories. It's passed down for generations. And if you take care of this thing, it's got a lifetime guarantee, right? Yeah. Now, the price point is another thing that we looked at and we were kind of encouraged about because this field skillet is $100. It's about mid-range. Some of the other American-made, um, I think you're running in the maybe $50 range. Yep. The other skillets are running $250 plus yes. for the same skillet. Again, like if you want to give a gift that's special, that's going to last, cast iron is an investment. That's right. Um, and so not only are you investing a little money, but you got to put time into it, but it will give it back to you, especially if you start with something quality. That's right. You will have the link for this field skillet and some information on their company below, as well as that YouTube Unbox channel. Check that out, because I think there's going to be other fun things. Oh, yes, it is. Um, we hope that some of you wake up Christmas morning with one Ooh, of these skillets. One of these field skillets. Because you could cook Christmas breakfast that yeah. day. Made in the USA. That's right. The only place to get cast iron. We thank you for stopping by out here in the barn today. God bless y'all. Thank you for stopping by. Hit that subscribe button before you get out of here. Take care.